So you're going to marry Fiona instead of Fatima. Well, this video is for you. In this video, we'll be talking about marrying a brand new revert and sharing some advice based off our personal experiences. Full disclosure, I've only done this once. <laughs> so I'm not an expert on it, but I have some experience. But all jokes aside, we're not students of knowledge. We're not scholars or anything like that. We're just talking about some really basic aspects of marriage and just our personal experiences. Fiona is like... Shrek. Are you Princess Fiona? Donkey. I've only heard the name Fiona in Shrek. That makes me Shrek. Donkey. Are you gonna marry an ogre? Watch this. And as we all know, Muslim reverts come in all shapes and sizes, colors and complexion. Some are green. <laughs> <laughs> and just like raised Muslims, different reverts have different levels of understanding and knowledge of Islam. But in this video specifically, I'll be speaking from the perspective of a raised Muslim who married a fairly new revert. This one. <laughs> My Shrek. <laughs> My Fiona. You're not a knight in shining armor then, if you're Shrek. Not gonna lie, I'd rather be Shrek than the knight in shining armor. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, lady. The first time I went to Norway after getting married, we watched Shrek on the plane okay. to Norway. Right. You know that's like 20 years old plus? Or Shrek is 20 years old? Did it not come out like 20, 2004? Shrek. <gasps> When did it come out? Oh, 2001. Shrek is 23 years old. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. no. Oh no. And even though someone is a new revert, it does not mean that they are new to Islam. Correct. Like personally, I looked into Islam, studied Islam for maybe nine months, which is not a long time, no. but it wasn't like fresh out of the womb, you know? <laughs> and some even look into Islam and study for years before they convert. So now I'll be revealing the secret to having a successful marriage with a revert. First, what you're going to do is to like and subscribe. <laughs> you just had to plug. Right. I'm like waiting like, <laughs> what's the secret here <laughs> to our successful marriage? <laughs> Growing up, I thought I'd marry an Asian girl, live in an Asian country, in an Asian house, with Asian children, eating Asian food. But here I am. Married to a Scandinavian, living in a Scandinavian country with a Scandi Asian child, but I'm still eating Asian food. You wanna know who I thought I was gonna marry? <laughs> Today. But in general, this advice is for any Muslim. Whether you're engaged, betrothed, you're in the making dua phase, maybe just praying next to a father, or in the imaginary phase, this can probably benefit you in some way, shape, or form, inshallah. Unless you watch anime, because you know you're not gonna get married if you watch anime. <laughs> There's no hope for you guys. My Shrek. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Technically, Shrek is anime because anime just means animation, right? Does it? Okay, ask a Japanese person if Shrek is anime to them. Shuriku. Shrek. <laughs> Shuriku. <laughs> I can't do donkey. I don't know what that would be. Dongu. <laughs> Ni hao to all my Japanese friends. <laughs> Stop, I'm kidding. So the first piece of advice, separate culture and Islam. Be objective and identify what is culture and what is Islam. And honestly, it could be something that you've been doing for years since you were a kid and like your whole family does it. But the thing is, when you look into it, there's no references or any proof from the Quran and Sunnah. Kind of like some of those aesthetic Tumblr, Instagram quotes and stories about Islam. Like, yeah, sure, they're very pretty, they're very nice to look at. It makes you warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> but when you look into it, like, where's the proof? And it's the same trash. It was made up. It's as real as your chances of getting married. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. The face you made not to crack yourself up before you said <laughs> it. <laughs> Please am... play the clip. I am hilarious. He's like, he, he, he. okay. <laughs> it's important to make this distinction because a revert might not know the difference. Heck, you might not know the difference. <laughs> and learning something that's actually coming from culture, but thinking that it's Islamic, can be really problematic. Brother, uh, what's that? There can be things in your culture that may seem Islamic in nature, but in reality have nothing to do with Islam. This becomes dangerous because spreading information that you think is from Islam when it's not, can be very damaging to a revert, especially a new revert. And keep in mind, even though that the revert's culture is not a Muslim culture, 
you don't have to disregard everything. There could be aspects that are perfectly fine to do, like taking a um, hike in the mountain on a sunny day, <laughs> you know? Very Norwegian thing to do. Very <laughs> Norwegian thing to do, yeah. But we don't celebrate Christmas. Or get drunk. What is that? And taking part in their culture, that's fine to do. Doing so might help them feel less lonely and less alienated. And it's not I'm saying abandon your culture. No, no. Yeah. All I'm saying is look into it. Because remember, you're a Muslim first. Everything else is secondary. And it's natural to be protective of your culture or to feel pride in your culture. But you must also have the humility and the self-awareness to acknowledge when something actually comes from culture and not Islam. Because there could be a scenario where your revert spouse asks you, the raised Muslim, about something that they've observed from your culture that you might think is Islamic. But in reality, it's not. Not even that. If the revert asks you, is ABC permissible or not? I see you guys doing it. I read online and someone told me, don't take it as an attack. Mm. You don't have to be defensive. Most likely they're coming from a good place and they right. just want to learn. So the second piece of advice is be active in their pursuit of knowledge. Be involved in seeking Islamic knowledge together. Yes, the Shahada is important and basically the basis of your life as a Muslim. But what comes after that Shahada is almost just as important. Because eventually this honeymoon period will end. This honeymoon period of both marriage and being a new revert will end. And then you have to adapt and really get used to your new lifestyle of not only having to look after your deen, but also being supportive and encouraging to a new revert's deen. Without being too pushy and without being too slack. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. It's like a fine balance there to wanting to help them improve, but without deterring them. And of course, things take time, but don't let it take too much time because we don't have all the time in the world. No. And Alhamdulillah, where we were at the time, we had the opportunity to go to Islamic classes and learn together. And honestly, it could be the most basic things that you already knew as a child. But at the very least, you would know where they're at in their journey. And learning about Islam and converting can be a very lonely path. So having, you know, your spouse obviously with you makes it a lot easier. Right. We even took like marriage class, <laughs> like Muslim marriage class. Right. It was good, especially for a new revert. Like there's a lot of things with being a spouse and a Muslim spouse that's vastly different than a non-Muslim spouse that you kind of grew up thinking you would be. Right. So yeah, be proactive in seeking knowledge together. And now you don't actually have to be in a Muslim country to do something like that. There's so many resources online. Yeah. There's so many different places you can find knowledge together. And when it comes down to it, you, the raised Muslim, will most likely be their first resource when they have a question about Islam. Simply because they have direct access to you and might think that you know everything. And if you don't know the answer, you should at least know where to get it. And this goes for raised Muslims and reverts alike. There's no shame saying, I don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. Let's look it up. I'm going to ask my mom or something. You know, I'm going to ask an imam. Yeah. You know, like, there's no shame in that. It's way better than being like, yeah, maybe, I think. And then it causes confusion or misleading. When you marry a revert, sometimes it forces you to take a look at what you've been doing growing up, living in a homogenous Muslim society in a fully Muslim community. Because a lot of times, culture blends and seeps into what you're doing on a daily basis without you knowing. And you might recognize it as an Islamic practice when it's not. And so the next thing, and one of the most important things in all of marriages, not just a revert marriage, yeah. is having patience. Things that you might have learned as a kid years ago might be entirely new and foreign to a brand new revert. Just something as simple as reciting Al-Fatiha or remembering to do your five daily prayers. And chances are, if they're a brand new revert, they might have a limited knowledge about Islam and its practices. There can be gaps in their understanding of certain rulings or certain practices in Islam. And they might not even be aware of it. And it definitely is a responsibility of you, the raised Muslim, to be able to provide that information and fill those gaps of knowledge. Or at the very least, point them in the right direction. As scary as it is, you, as the raised Muslim, could be the revert's first introduction to Islam and Muslims. Meaning how you, as a raised Muslim spouse, treat the revert spouse can heavily affect them. It can make their journey blossom, or it can heavily set them back. In other words, it can make or break their faith. Yeah, it could. And needless to say, Islam is perfect, but Muslims aren't. 
If a revert has been mistreated or even abused by their spouse, their whole perception of Islam can be based off of that experience. And marriage in general can be a very delicate matter. And being married to a revert can require even more care. What's your experience being married to a revert? This was asked a very good question, very common question, very important question. If I had to give a rating... <laughs> no, I'm not asking for a rating. 10 out of 10 would marry again. <laughs> Thanks. Don't ask me the same. I'm joking. <laughs> there's only because there's no scale. I'm joking. And honestly, all these things that we've talked about is just like the tip of the iceberg. There's so many different intricacies and so many different delicate topics and subjects when you marry a revert. Mm. Again, this is like the baseline, the most basic stuff about marriage with reverts. To all those who are looking for marriage, work on your deen, make sincere dua, and mold yourself into someone that you would be happy marrying. Yeah. May Allah grant you a righteous and pious spouse. Amin. And as always, a special thank you to our channel members, Charlotte, Nori, and Kari. Thank you guys again for all your support and... We appreciate it. Yeah, we do. If you're interested in becoming a channel member, Click on the join button and you'll see all the different perks from the different tiers and stuff. See you there. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Assalamu alaikum. See you in the next one. Oh, <laughs> both did three sides. That was not planned. When you, when you knew we were going to get married, how, how would you think a marriage with a revert was going to be like versus how it's actually been so far? <sighs> to be honest, I felt